Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at two things, fixed point binary numbers and floating point binary numbers. So far, most people know about binary numbers as just a series of uh, zeros and ones and that that's pretty much it, okay? And you know that um, the first, the least significant bit represents one, then it goes two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and one hundred and twenty-eight onwards. The number keeps doubling, and these are great for integers. Okay, so or rather, you know, like whole numbers. Okay. What do you do when you want to store a number with a decimal? So, for example, like 6.5, okay? What do you do? Well, this, is, this can be achieved in, in, in two ways. We can either use a fixed point binary number or we can use a floating point binary number. Fixed point is the easier one to understand. We'll cover that one first. And then we're going to look at floating point numbers, which are a little bit more complicated, but actually give us a lot more flexibility with, with our number system. So let's take a look at how that works. The first thing we're going to look at is fixed point binary numbers. And this is really easy to understand. Uh, I'll just write down a, uh, a, a number. We're actually, we're going to, we're going to do that 6.5 number. We're going to show uh, how we can represent the number 6.5 as a binary value. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an 8 bit binary number and I'm just going to split it right down the middle. Um, I'm going to write this number out. Um, we as uh, let's do it like this: one, two, four, and eight. So these are the first two bits, and I want to represent six first. So it's going to be zero, one, one, zero. So that makes six. Okay, this is the first four bits we need, and then I'm going to write down some more binary numbers. Um, oh, rather some more bits, uh, and this number is actually going to be one, zero, zero, zero thus making our 8-bit binary number in total, okay? Now, what do these numbers represent? Okay, well, actually, they represent a half, or 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, and 0.0625. Well, let's try and neaten up a bit. 0.625, okay? So at all stages, we are halving our number. So this section here essentially represents the 0.5. So what we've done is we've, we've basically split our 8-bit number down the middle, and we've said the first four bits represent the whole part of the number, and the other four bits represent the decimal part. So we have said that our fixed point is in the middle. Okay, So we've said four bits represent the whole part, Four bits represent the decimal part. So this represents 6.5. Okay, so let's let's just try another one. Let's try, we, uh, let's do 10. We want to do 10.75. Well, what kind of number would that look like? Well, let's just write out the top here our binary value. So 8, 4, 2, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, and 0 0.0. 625. Okay, so we want to represent 10, so that's an 8 and a 2. We've got our decimal place in the middle. Okay, let's put that in there. So we've got a decimal place, and we to make 7. 0 0.75, we need the half, and we need the 0.25, and then we're okay with everything else. So our actual final number would look something like this 10101100 with our imaginary fixed point right in the middle. Four bits for this side and four bits for this side. Okay, now something to pay attention to here. By determining the uh, point or the fixed point, we, well, to determine where we want that, uh, we have to consider how much range of a number do we want. So this is the range. This side is the range. And then we also need to determine the accuracy. Okay, so accura accuracy, okay, is this side of the floating point, okay? The more bits we have on the right-hand side of the fixed point, the more accurate we can make our number. But that comes at a cost of the range, the size of the number that we can make. The more, point, uh, the more bits we have on the left side of the floating point, oh, sorry, the fixed point, the larger the range, but it comes at a cost of the accuracy. 
So let's take a look at that as an example, uh, just to kind of show you what I mean. So if I used, say, um, well, let's just do one, 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 one. So there we have uh, seven ones and point one. The largest number I can make with that number is 127.5, okay? So we've got the seven bits, okay, which give us the 127, and the most accurate we can make it is to one decimal place, but it can only be either a zero, okay, or a 0.5. So this is the largest number we can make. So this has the most range, so this is the most range, and the least accurate. Okay, so that's that method there. So let's look at it the other way around. Let's do one point, then seven ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The largest number we can make now is one point, and then what we have to do is add up all of these ones up at the top here, okay, which is going to be uh, tricky. So we've got, um, let's have a look, we've got We've got a really annoying number, actually, um, <laughs> because I've used so many bits, but let, let's give it a go. So the first one is 0.5, okay? Uh, the next one will be 0.25, the next one 0.125, uh, 0 0.0625. Uh, then we have 0 0.3125. 0, uh, 0 0.015625.0078125. Um, and I didn't do that off the top of my head. Cheated. Ah. Uh, anyway, the, what we need to do now is add these up. So if I boot up my calculator and work out that sum, it comes to uh, 0 0.9921875. And obviously you add then the 1 onto that, which gives you 1.9921875. That's the largest number you can make, assuming, that is assuming that the decimal place, you give at least one bit for the uh, whole part of the number. If you put the fixed point right at the beginning, then it becomes even more accurate. But you can see here that this number Oh, uh, it is, you know, we can make a much more accurate sort of decimal number, uh, but we sacrifice the range. The range is much smaller, uh, in this example. So whereas this one, uh, where you have more bits for the whole part, it gives you the range, but, you know, significantly less accurate number. This has a much lower range, but significantly more accurate number. So that's essentially fixed point, um, you know, you you have to decide where you put the fit, the, the actual fixed point. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at another example, which is floating point numbers. Okay, so let's just write down a binary number first of all. Okay, so I'm going to just write down a random binary number. Um, uh, actually, let's do this. Okay. Right. So. Floating point binary numbers make use of two things. One of them is the mantissa, and another one is called the exponent. Um, exponent. Okay. Now, okay, let's just make sure I spell this properly. Um, exponent. Okay. You might recognize these uh, words from uh, maths when you are writing numbers in standard form. Um, essentially, the mantissa, uh, well, the exponent is going to tell us how, or rather, the, it's going to tell us where to put the decimal place. When you have um, a floating point number, uh, in most exams, they are treated as, unless they say otherwise, it's treated that they're already in, um, in in its normalized form. That basically means that the decimal place is assumed to be here. 
Now you might get a question that says, okay, uh, the, the first five bits represent the mantissa and the final three bits represent the exponent. So what does that actually mean? Well, what we do is we say, okay, the, these are the three bits that represent the exponent. And in this case, this number adds up to three. Okay, so one, two, four. So two and one is equal to three. Because this is uh, normalized and because we are uh, going to use two's comp, okay, so two's complement, we know that this three is a positive number because this isn't a one, okay? So it's saying move the decimal place three places to the right because it's positive. So what we do is we go, okay, the decimal place is here. We're gonna go one, two, three. This gives us a number now of 0101.0. What we then do is say, okay, this is worth one, this is worth two, this is four and eight. And this is our point 0.5. 4 and 1 is equal to 5. Because we don't have anything in the final column here, uh, or the final bit, it, this is just 5.0. If this number had been a 1 at the end, it would have been 0.5. So let's just take a look at that as well. So we're going to go, um, well this time let's go the same number, 0.1, 0.1, 0.0, 0.1, 0.1. Again, we assume our decimal place is here, and we're moving three positive, okay, because we're, we're doing it to the right. Uh, oh, actually, I meant to do a slightly different number. Let's do, uh, let's move it uh, just two to the right this time. So plus two, we assume our decimal place is there. So we're gonna go one, two. This now gives us a number of zero, one, zero, point one, zero. We have this number as one, two and four, this number as 0.5 and 0.25, okay? So now we have 2.5. So the exponent just tells us where to move the decimal place. And then once we've moved the decimal place into the correct place, we can then apply our, uh, our rules uh, that we use for binary numbers and fixed point binary numbers to represent the final number, okay? Um, so, I mentioned earlier that this is in two's comp. So what happens if the exponent is actually a negative number? So let's take a look at that. Okay. I'll just delete everything on this page and we'll, we'll, we'll do a, another number. So we're going to go, um, zero, one, one, zero, one, uh, one, one, zero. Okay. So we're going to stick with the five for the mantissa and three for the exponent. Um, so let's just identify the exponent here. The exponent is, uh, remember this one, because this is in two's comp, this is one, this is two, and this is minus four. Minus four plus two results in minus two. So we're going to be moving the decimal place two places to the left, okay? So one, two. So that will then give us a number of, uh, and because this is in two's comp as well, this is a positive number. So we're going to pack out the front with zeros. We're going to go zero point, and then we're going to add in our next zero, and then we're going to start duplicating this number again. So zero, um, zero, one, one, zero, one. Uh, and what we end up having to do is say, okay, that's fine. This is, this is worth one, but there's nothing under it. This is worth 0.5. But there's nothing under it. This is 0.25. This is 0.125. I'll do them from underneath now. 0 0.0625. Uh, and then we've got, for this number, we've got uh, 0.03125. And then the final number is 0 0.015. Uh, six, two, five. Okay. So then what we have to do is just add up the numbers that have a one underneath them. So we've got point one, two, five plus, uh, point zero, six, two, five plus that last number, which is zero point zero, one, five, six, two, five. Um, all right. Let's bring up the calculator for this one. So, um, Okay, so uh, let's also put it into a useful mode. Okay, 
Right, so, uh, point 0.125, add point 0.0625, add uh, point 0.015625, giving us two, uh, 0.203125, okay? So this is the, uh, this is the answer that we're looking for, um, based on this. So we move the exponent, let's just review this. We move the exponent minus two, uh, so we went left. We packed out the beginning with zeros. Because this is the, the fixed point, everything to the right of the fixed point is a decimal, everything to the left is a whole part. So because the whole part didn't have one in it, it's just zero point, uh, whatever that large number was, um, there. Okay. All right, so I've shown you now how to do floating point using a positive exponent and a negative exponent. What happens if the first point is a one and we're going to move to the left? Um, actually, the process is quite simple. Uh, so let's just delete that and do another number. So we're going to start our number with one and we're going to keep it nice and simple. So zero, 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 uh, I'll actually just do one, one, zero, zero. So that's five. And then we're going to do one, two and zero. So I'm keeping this one deliberately simple. Okay. So we're going to be moving again. This is our exponent. Uh, we're going to be moving two to the left, uh, because we've got minus four plus the two results in minus two. So our fixed point is here. And what we're going to do again, we're going to move two to the left. And because this is a one here and we are in twos comp. Okay. Uh, we just pack out the ones. So we're going to go one, two, decimal point is there. And then we're going to copy out this number. One, two, one, two, three. Okay. So now we've got, um, a value because we're in twos comp, we have minus one. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, this is 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125. So we have minus one, oops, minus one, add 0 0.5, add 0.25, add 0.125. Okay. So bring up our trusty calculator so you can see it in action. Uh, uh, clear. Uh, so minus one, uh, bleh, minus one. Well, let's start again. One minus. Okay. So, uh, add 0 0.5, add 0 0.25, add 0.125 gives us minus 1.25. Okay. So minus 0.125. Okay. So that's, that's basically it. Um, this is in twos comp. You have two parts, the mantissa part and the exponent. Most of the time the exam will say, well, the exam will always say, um, five bits represent the mantissa, three bits represent the exponent. Might, sometimes it's four and four, sometimes it's six and two. You know, just bear that in mind and remember that it's always in twos comp. Um, so apply those rules. If the number starts with a one and you're shifting left, Pack it full of ones at the start. If it's a zero at the start and you're moving left, pack it with zeros, um, because it's a positive number. And that is essentially it. That's all you need to know about fixed point binary numbers and floating point binary numbers. Have a really good day.